Hey, welcome to another episode of UENPD TV. I'm Michael Hackerinen from the Professional Development Department. We're here today at Green Canyon High School in North Logan, Utah. We're gonna learn about how some high school seniors are not just consuming mixed reality content, but creating it themselves in Miss Allison Ense's computer science class. Let's go inside and take a look. For those of you who had submitted your work, I do have your work on the class VRs if you wanna check it out in those play with your what you've created if you get it finished and want to test so it here we are inside Green Canyon High School and we're sitting with Allison Entz who is a computer science teacher Allison tell us how did you get uh, interested in sharing augmented virtual mixed and extended reality with your students last year the state came out with a list of classes that they were going to allow us to teach in our classes and one of those was augmented virtual reality and I thought hey my students would love that, that's where the world's headed. So I thought, why not give it a try? So do you have experience with programming augmented and virtual reality apps or tools? Absolutely not. You just started teaching Just something. started teaching it. How, how does that work as an educator when you're not an expert in the field and you're expected to teach something new? What kind of sacrifices did you have to make? It takes a lot of extra time to do a lot of research and I use my students to help me figure things out and for instance, one of the programs we were using was CoSpaces, and it's like, okay, this is new, I haven't used it, let's get in, let's play with it, let's see how it works, and yeah. How do your students respond to that when you say, here's a new tool, I'm not an expert on it, help me figure it out? They love it. It makes them, I think it makes them feel empowered and uh, just really good about learning something new and feeling like they're helping out future classes and everything. And I told them in the beginning, they were my guinea pigs. They were helping me figure this class out and that there would be a lot of that. And they just took hold and went with it. So they're not afraid to take risks or break something, try something new? For the most part, no. There's always a few students that are a little more leery than others, but overall, I think they did really well. So what do you do as the teacher when a student comes to you with a question that you can't answer? I say, let's see if we can figure it out. I open it up to the class and say, hey, has anybody figured out how to do such and such? Or we just go do some research and see what we can find. And Sounds like you've created a real community of learners where everybody's patient with each other and with you. I, I've tried. That's cool. That's, that's the goal. <laughs> what other tools have you used? You mentioned CoSpaces. Now that's a program. Mm -hmm. um, is that expensive? No, it wasn't expensive at all. Uh, I can't remember how much it was, but it was like 100 bucks for the year. For the whole class? For the whole class. Okay. And that included the Merge Cube tool on there, so they can create for the Merge Cube, which is awesome. So you got the CoSpaces EDU, is just software package. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Merge Cubes. What other tools are you using? We use ThingLink to play around with ThingLink a little bit, and we also just have like stuff for them to explore in. You know, like we have HTC Vive, and I, make, I made them walk the plank and play Beat Saber and Acron to get more students involved and we have some Oculus Go's for them to explore in and just some viewers so they can see, okay, you can look at VR and AR in very inexpensive environments or more expensive and books so they can see AR. So just lots of different tools for them to use and see what's out there. So it sounds like you have an awful lot of tools being used. Tell us a little bit about the sequence of the class. How do you get started and um, how long was the class and what are their finished products going to be? So we started, our classes are 12 weeks long, and we have state standards that we follow. They were very, very vague for this class since it is so new, but basically the standards were about uh, exploring the technologies overall, and then it focuses on different industries. How are these technologies being used in different industries? Like education, architecture, construction, entertainment, gaming, of course. And also we talk about telepresence and telerobotics and how the world's headed in that direction. So that's how I got started, is I looked at those to see how am I gonna do this class? And that gave me a good starting point. Because those standards were a little bit vague, we had to do a lot of trial and error to see what would work for the class, how we could incorporate them creating, not only learning about the technologies. And so it was a lot of trial and error make adjustments. Mm -hmm. If something doesn't work, you would. how do you determine what you're going to abandon? Like when a app isn't the right app, how do you know? I'd say a lot of it would be student involvement, student engagement, 
And some of the stuff we did, like I had them create escape rooms in ThingLink, mm -hmm. which are awesome on the computer, 360 views, you know, to find clues and everything. But when we tried to put those on a headset, like the Class VR headset, there's no way to type, right? So they can't type answers. So I would adjust that for future and make it be something they just click on to find instead of typing in answers, if I want it to be completely immersive. so. What are some of the skills your students get out of this class? I think a lot of the skills they're getting is how this, how this technology is being used in other industries and how it's growing and that you're only limited by what you can imagine nowadays, you know, like the HoloLens 2. <clears throat> it's amazing that how they're using that in the technical industries, you know, and automotive and surgeons and all these places are using this cool technology and I tell students even if you're not planning to create the technology or anything like that it's probable that you're going to be using it in some way shape or form so I'm hoping to get them to see that they don't need to be afraid of this new technology they can just jump in and learn how to do it. So you've shared some really neat tools and apps and it sounds like your kids have designed some products that we'd love to see. Can we check out some of those? Oh, of course. They've been excited. They've been working hard and they, they have some, some pretty amazing projects to show you. So, yeah. All right. Let's go see what they've got. All right. So Sage, you're a high school senior, yes. and you designed this on CoSpaces, but it works on a Merge Cube. Tell us a little bit about how that works between the two. So the Merge Cube kind of works as a QR code, but instead it kind of projects a hologram through a different lens with augmented reality, so you can use like a phone or a headset, so when you're holding this in real life, you can see the hologram in real life around it. And how'd you make the hologram? CoSpaces? Yes, CoSpaces. They have a bunch of um, pre-made uh, models here that you can use to create different scenes on the cube and stuff. And is it just drag and drop or? Um, it's a little bit more intuitive than that. You can raise things, you can um, change the size, and rotate them on the axes and place them where you want. And some of the models have animations as well that work um, when they're projected. So if you were making something for another class, like let's say anatomy, and you were trying to put in like uh, human body parts, if they weren't already here in this clip art, would you mm -hmm. be able to design your own? Oh uh, yeah, you would be able to. And here I can actually search uh, for, this is just kind of what's already pre-made. And then if I do web search and I want to do like, part mm -hmm. for like an anatomy project. I have all these models to choose from and these are usually made oh, from a good other one. students. Yeah. Yeah. And so it'll load here with this loading screen for a little bit. Um, and then I can change the size here. And there we go. So I can move this however I want. Cool. So this is your first class with mm -hmm. AR VR stuff. Um, yeah. Have you found it like really difficult to learn to use the programs? Oh, I thought it would be, but it's actually really easy. The programs are, um, they're really easy to catch on to and stuff, and the teachers are always there to help you with that kind of thing. How is it learning from um, Ms. Eds when she's not an expert in this field, mm -hmm. and she's learning this as you guys go? Yeah, well, um, this is a really like new industry, new topic, and so we're just all kind of learning together. Well, she mentioned the different industries. What kind mm -hmm. of industries have you found a connection to with mm -hmm. AR, VR materials? I think medical is really interesting because it provides a way more um, intuitive sense. Um, you're able to be more hands-on without having to go through all the resources that it requires mm -hmm. to actually be there. Um, it just makes it a lot more um, accessible, I would say. Oliver, you're also a senior here, and mm -hmm. you're in the class. Um, yeah. I see on the screen that someone has lost their cat, and yeah. they need help, but mm -hmm. they can't find how to start. Yeah. Are you designing a game? I am designing a game. Um, more of an exploration slash parkour type of find your own way around the city type of deal. Yeah. Cool. And what program are you used to making? Uh, uh, Co-spaces. Okay. Which is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah? What do you think of it so far? You've got a teacher who's mm -hmm. showing you all of this emerging technology, and she's like not an expert on it. There aren't really any experts on it. <laughs> yeah. What kind of learning community do you have going on here? It's, I mean, it's interesting because since not many, you know, there's no many professionals, there's not many teachers, not everybody is learning. It's not just, I'm new to this, and there's 100 billion more people that are more used mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. but everyone is learning, and it's an interesting experience for sure. Where do you want to go next with uh, this kind of content in computer science? Um, I, I don't look to be in a career for it, but I, I do, I am eager to see what like gaming possibilities there in the future and educational stuff that would be interesting to see as well. Cool. Give us a little tour of your game. Show us how you're uh, setting this up. So this is just the like, um, like behind the scenes type of stuff where you can move stuff and you can add stuff like 
move around buildings and do all that jazz. Um, but you can play the game, and this is just the game, but once you put on the headset, you can move around, and we're still figuring out that part of it. But as you saw, uh, this woman lost her cat, and you need to find it throughout the city, who has been infested with jungles and trees and all that. And you can move around, and you find your way around, and eventually you'll find a pathway right here, mm -hmm. which is somewhat invisible, but, you know, oh, look at that. make it easier. Yep. On there's the a roof giant fire hydrant. Is that for Clifford, the red, big red dog? Uh, I mean, it's kind of foreshadowing because you can actually see the cat up there. Oh, She's it's massive. Giant cat. Yep. But you go around, there's a maze and pathways and bridges and jumps and all that. I'm, Tell me a little bit about what industry you think you could use this content in in the future besides gaming. So I plan to go into like electrical engineering, electrical like mechanics and stuff like that. Um, and we learned about in the industry and the construction portion of this type of augmented reality that they can put on like like a HoloLens or a certain type of glasses that can show you the way something is supposed to be or the way it's going to be or just generally helps out in the construction industry. And so hopefully I can use something like that and it'll make the job much easier rather than just looking at you know plans and blueprints and stuff like that. Taking blueprints and models and now making it fully immersive for mm -hmm. the customer to see what their building's gonna look like. Exactly. That's whether really cool. they like this, whether they don't like this, they can change it, they can do whatever. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So this has been really neat, Allison. Uh, I'm impressed with what you've done after taking that intro AR VR class, but I'm really impressed with what your students are creating. Thank you so much for having us and sharing and keep up the great work. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Well, thank you for watching this episode. It looks like it's time to get back to class. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch more episodes of UENPD TV. Thanks for joining. Oh my gosh.